Hello everyone, this is Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 29. We'll talk about how Nebraska is doing versus everyone else, uh, what would really be a, a safe to open level, and then uh, what about the safety of young kids, for example. So uh, unfortunately, the United States compared to the rest of the world is uh, doing uh, much worse. And uh, although starting a lot of times the same uh, time, basically, uh, our, their response was uh, very uh, planned, uh, well executed. And so a country like Germany, for example, is down to what would be considered a very safe threshold to open their schools and other things. The United States just re never really got there. Now, there are some states that, uh, that have gotten there. And so some of the inertial states like New York and New Jersey, which were responsible for the inertial, initial outbreaks, they've actually got their numbers closer back down here what's really happening is there's a whole bunch of other states that pretty much ignored the lessons of everybody else and got it wrong. And so if you look at state by state, you'll see that, you know, Nebraska's uh, kind of smoldering along here. Other states like Colorado, for example, are doing a pretty good job and a few others down here. Others, uh, the big uh, push right now is that a whole bunch of states pretty much ignored all the expert advice. Arizona's levels are now actually worse than uh, New York at its worst. Florida's not too far behind, South Carolina, a couple others. So what they got wrong is they opened too soon. They ignored the advice of epidemiologists and what other countries learned. They just kind of basically made it up as they went. In addition to that, they had no communication plan around mass and distancing. They still have inadequate, inadequate testing, and they've just not responded quick enough when numbers started looking bad. And I'd say it's kind of like putting out a fire. If a fire, the fire department comes to put out your, the fire in your house, uh, they, they do more than just simply put out the, the fire they can see from the outside. Once uh, they can get inside, they'll put out the rest that's smoldering. So it could, because if they don't, they're going to come back in a couple hours when it flames back up again. And this is exactly what a lot of states have done, and I think Nebraska's at risk of doing the same thing. They haven't really put the full fire out. They, they tamped it down a little bit, but they've not gotten to the point of putting the fire out. Um, and one of the things that's important is to look at the, the, the cases per million and what you have to get to to reopen and the trend needed so that you can establish that. And so most uh, of the European countries got their numbers down in the 15 to 30 per million and then also had a plan to get it to continue dropping, which they did in fact do. Whereas in most uh, uh, U.S. country, a lot of states actually didn't get down to that level and had no plan to do anything about it and they opened way too fast and their numbers kind of grew out of control. So uh, Nebraska is kind of, unfortunately, I think in the middling category. So if you look at those state, the, based on those prior numbers, most of the other countries got into between about zero to 50 down into this range before they started reopening things. We did not, and these other states definitely did not. And so that's where their numbers went out of control. So we're still not where we need to be to safely reopen right now. Now there's things we can do to do more than what we were doing. And I don't think we need a total lockdown like, like some states did, but we also have to get our numbers down before we start having bars and restaurants and parties and things like that. Um, and so what, where we are now, what puts us at such risk is that currently we are in a level that Florida was in just three weeks ago. And so you're hearing about Florida, Arizona, Texas, uh, our numbers aren't that far off of where they were three weeks ago. So we need to respond, wait, not wait until we start seeing this type of a trend. Uh, we need to react sooner and start looking at some of these numbers. And so again, uh, using probably in this 15, 30 per million, that's kind of where you need, need, to, need to think you can reopen, but you need a trend to go down like this. Um, so, for example, what happened is that Germany did a good job, uh, got its epidemic under control, started reopening when they got down to here, not when they were way up in this category here. And you'll notice this five per million is what they, uh, all the international experts are saying is probably the safe level. And we'll use those for the, the rest of the discussion for our, our state uh, of Nebraska levels. Uh, and so the risk th safety thresholds that some are settling on, and these aren't perfect, they're still being refined as we go. A lot of folks are using sort of a red, a green, and a yellow category. Some have sort of an in-between orange category as well, which we've put. And so these drafts, we're using these thresholds for the Nebraska numbers that you can look at yourself if you want to play with them. So we now have, if you go to the healthynebraska.org website, it'll, re, it'll re, uh, direct to this Tableau page where you can click any county in Nebraska. And so Nebraska right now, uh, as a state, we're in that what would con most other countries would consider a red level and not ready to start reopening widely like bars and restaurants, for example. Um, and the reason for this is why, why is that things can flare up so fast. Just, so just like that fire, fire, the fire department coming to your house and not fully putting out the fire, it can flame right back up again. And so if you're at a one case per 100,000 and that uh, with some exponential spread goes to about 500 cases in a community, well, we'll contact tracers in your hospitals. They can handle 500. But if you're starting from 10 cases, that, that degree of spread could suddenly go to 5,000 and that might overwhelm our healthcare system. And it can spread out of control before our contact tracers can slow it down. And so you need to slow down to a level that's safe before you start opening. 
So Lancaster County, we had been doing a good job. We actually had a lot of spillover, unfortunately, from the, uh, the meatpacking plant in Crete, because a lot of those folks who worked at Smithfield lived in Lincoln, brought it home and infected their relatives and, and children and some other folks. We were getting making good progress down into the yellowish-orange level a week ago. Unfortunately, now we're heading back up again. I think one is because uh, restaurants and bars open too, too fast. People aren't wearing their masks in the grocery store, or they're having parties. And this doesn't even include the July 4th weekend parties yet, because these tests actually were drawn back here. We still have really slow testing. It's taking as long as a week to get tests back. So the July 4th weekend parties that were happening, if people weren't behaving themselves, we're going to start seeing that spread here. And we need to start getting control of this really quickly so we don't follow Florida or Arizona's path. Um, so the other thing that's concerning is that the uh, positivity rate is starting to go up. And I will point out that if you look at the health department's uh, graphs, they aren't perfectly identical to us, and that's because the public use data is sometimes lags about you know, 12 or 24 hours. There's a lot of erraticness in the data to begin with. That's why almost everybody is using a seven-day moving average, although some are even thinking 14 because our testing is so slow. And so here in Lancaster County site, if you look, our positive test, this was during those Smithfield spillover outbreaks, but it looks like our positivity rate's bumping back up again, unfortunately. Uh, Douglas and Sarpy County, so are actually our highest rates now are actually in Omaha, and so Omaha uh, has got some things down, but they still aren't tamping things down really either. Uh, interesting, Adams and Hall County, so there was the uh, Grand Island uh, GABS plant outbreak. Their numbers were, were approaching actually almost as bad as New York at its worst for a little while there, but they've really done a good job of slowing down their epidemic, and they're in that yellow tending to a green level. So if anybody in the state's ready to open, it's actually some of our meat processing facility communities because they took the epidemic seriously, whereas Lincoln and Omaha don't seem to be doing that right now. So what's the difference? Well, face masks is probably one of the biggest difference. So once you open up, you need a good plan and you need universal face masking. So I'm literally in Colorado right now recording this, and this is the grocery store we went to to, to get groceries with. They have a fa face mask requirement to go into the grocery store. So everybody there is wearing face masks. And if you look at the Colorado's response versus Nebraska, you'll see that they had uh, some initial outbreak because of the, the ski the ski resorts. Basically, people were traveling from all over the place. Well, they kind of shut down the ski resorts here, and then they got on top of things. And let, because of these universal masking, their numbers are actually getting down to the lower. They actually be maybe in a safe level. They've got a little ways to go yet, but they're certainly doing better than Nebraska. And so the universal masking is something we need to move toward. Uh, a lot of states that toward the south are learning the hard way, and they so a lot of the states uh, to the south, Florida, Texas, Arizona, those uh, governors have reversed themselves and now are pushing for masks, although they still have resistance because they don't have some local support and they're not getting national support either. So again, one of our problems in the United States is no coordinated national response, which is again part of our problem. Uh, and mask up Wyoming. So I drove through Wyoming on the way here. Um, they've got, uh, they're doing a pretty good job, especially on the western slope of Wyoming. Uh, when I went to restaurants and, uh, uh, I, well, I didn't go to restaurants, but when we uh, walked around, uh, almost everybody is wearing a mask, including in the grocery store. And I like the mask up Wyoming uh, because if I grew up uh, in a cattle uh, raising family, and so this kind of fits, I think, is very culturally appropriate for Wyoming. Uh, and so we need to work better on masks. And again, there's no controversy amongst this in the medical community. So in uh, all of the Nebraska state medical societies are behind using masks in school, for example. In Lincoln, we had uh, support from over 120 Lincoln physicians for this. Uh, and so there's not any really dispute in the medical side of the field whether we should use masks. We should. So lastly, what about kids? So people are a little worried about, well, is it safe to send our kids to school? And for me, that's my biggest concern. Uh, we do know, we've known, uh, well, obviously through the epidemic, we knew that there were a lot of a spread amongst adults. There was initially some, some skepticism of whether kids were even getting infected or not. So we knew there was adult-to-adult -adult transmission, but was there adult-to-kid transmission? Uh, unfortunately, that's been answered, and yes, there is adult-to-kid transmission. Uh, we know that that the, and this is Nebraska's data. We're over, already over 2,300 cases in kids. I wish they'd break it down further, 0 to 9 and 10 to 19, because maybe it's, it's mostly in teenagers and maybe young kids aren't getting as infected. Uh, but we don't have to need, so we need to have a better breakdown and access to that data to find that out for sure. The real big question is, will kids spread it to other kids? So when the kids go to school, for example, will they spread it amongst each other? And will kids spread it to, back to adults? So, for example, would that put the teasters at risk? We actually still don't have very good data on that. There's some studies coming out in other countries. There have been some school outbreaks, but they haven't broken down age to, uh, ranges in what I've seen so far. It may be that it's uh, more so in teenagers and less in younger children, in which case that would make opening up schools a lot earlier. Uh, but we're still getting this data in. And so over the next three to four weeks, hopefully we'll get a lot more detailed data. 
uh, some examples, for example, the CDC uh, has this pre-production uh, article from Japan where they actually broke out the source of all their different outbreaks from contact tracing, and Japan's been doing a really, really good job with this. I wish our country would do job things like this. So, for example, they broke down uh, of, of, I think it was 61 uh, different outbreaks. Uh, they had 18 coming from healthcare facilities, 10 from other care facilities like nursing homes. Uh, they say daycares, but uh, they didn't give any detail on whether that was the kids getting infected or not. Restaurants and bars, of course, workplaces, music related events, uh, ceremonial things like a funeral, wedding, that kind of thing. So they know exactly where their outbreaks are coming. So it'd be nice if we'd see some reports like that coming out of the United States. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics is putting out some guidance for school reentry that's uh, worth uh, taking a look at if you're concerned about kids. Uh, there's also been some good reports coming out of Singapore lately, an early study about whether there's really spread in children in schools or not yet. So hopefully we'll find out more in the next com coming weeks. Uh, but again, like last week, I talked about George Will's quote on leadership to governors to choose and always on the basis of imperfect information. And in public health, when you don't have perfect information, you should be uh, erring on the side of caution, not recklessness like most of our states have been doing. I think the other big problem is it's not public health versus the economy. We need good public health to get the economy back on track. And I think they made a mistake by thinking public health was the enemy of the economy. Well, if you don't get public health right, if you don't tamp down the fire, you get what you're getting bet down in Texas and Arizona now where they're having to actually shut things back down again. That's the last thing we want in Nebraska. So so it's time to start taking this a little more seriously, look at the thresholds and start wearing a mask and hopefully we'll have some better information on kids soon. So this is what I do for a living. Uh, these are the roles I, I currently uh, occupy, uh, two, the two paid positions uh, here and then I'm an elected official. These aren't necessarily the opinions of everybody I work with, but I do use these in form of decisions of all these organizations.